In 6th century BC, during the festival of Dionysus in ancient Greece, participants would dress up in masks and give small scenes of dialogue. Over time, these small scenes grew into grand productions with competitions for the best playwright. It is from this small tradition of the Dionysia that theater is born. Like every form of entertainment, though, its reputation spreads, eventually making its way to the Romans. And that is where our journey into Roman theater begins. In the beginning of Roman theater history, most of the plays coming in were land translations of ancient Greek plays. Certainly one of the things that we can tell is that right, most of our Roman comedies took their, were working off of a Greek original. And yet we know that they weren't just translations. They twisted in various ways to deal with real Roman issues. The Romans had a variety of performances on stage and weren't limited to just comedy and tragedy. They also had satires, poems, mimes, even pantomimes. Pantomime is closer to what is now in the modern world called a mime. When you mime something, you're imitating it, but you're not necessarily using words. Mimes, on the other hand, what was originally called a mime rather than a pantomime mm. in the classical world, those have words. They're just um, often improvised rather than literary. It tends to be a little bit raunchier and less connected in its plot, so it's not trying to tell a story so much as just kind of be a sort of silly. So, we have the playwrights, we have the plays, the only thing missing now is the theater. Surprisingly, the Romans didn't build stone theaters right at the get-go by decree of the Roman Senate. For a variety of reasons, the main one being it was too time-consuming for an entertainment venue. Thus, the Romans had to perform at a more thrilling location. Circuses were one of the first public entertainment venues. Here, Romans participated in chariot races, dances, music, even plays. A temporary wooden stage would be placed on one of the corners of the circus, along with wooden benches for the crowd to sit in. When the performances were finished, the set would be dismantled, but the benches would remain for chariot races so spectators could sit and enjoy the fun. This is a sort of overnight thing, right? The, it's closer to like when the circus rolls into town and people build some bleachers, they put up some tents. It's a here one day, gone the next. Eventually, stone auditoriums were built outside of Rome, especially in southern Italy. However, these designs were not purely Greek or Roman, rather a mix of the two, a Greco-Roman style, if you will. Was there visually a difference between Greek and Roman theaters? If so, where could we actually see these differences? In Pompeii. In 79 AD, Mount Vesuvius erupted and covered the city of Pompeii in a layer of ash, keeping everything in the city perfectly preserved like houses, frescoes, even paved streets. The biggest theatrical treasure in Pompeii are the two theaters. The larger theater is a Greco-Roman design, while the smaller one is pure Roman. If we were to compare the smaller Roman theater in Pompeii to a Greek theater, we could see the difference in the size and the orchestra fit. However, Greek theaters also were placed near temples to emphasize the purpose of the theater and the plays. Romans were not as critical of where they put their theaters. Thus, it did not have to be near a temple always. While theater flourished in the Republic, Rome itself was still theater lacking. Then the year 55 BC came, and a Roman general named Pompey built a hippodrome right next to a concrete theater. So how big was the theater? Well, the University of Arizona football stadium can seat about 56,000 people. The theater of Pompeii could sit about 27,000 people. So half of the U of A football stadium can sit the maximum size capacity of the theater of Pompeii. Even today, Roman plays are still performed with a modern context, from Polybius's The Brothers Menachemus to Seneca's Medea. Our expectations for comedy and tragedy were set by the Romans. Thus, Roman theater presents an unrecognized truth. History not only exists in a book or in a classroom, 
it endures, and we are still willing participants.